So I'm very happy to be here with uh, one of the famous grandmaster, traditional grandmaster of Skrima. And I'm, I'm very happy to stay here in Honolulu because this is a really paradise <laughs> of America. And then I, am, I would like to introduce the grandmaster Delmar because he's a really a traditional grandmaster of Skrima here in Honolulu in, in Hawaii. So, but uh, uh, in uh, our in our uh, philosophy, is that the important is uh, to know the history of the scrima because the history of the scrima is uh, part of uh, the you know the, the, the style. Huh? Mm -hmm. So nice to meet you, Master. I'm very happy to stay here to be for for giving this, this interview. Okay, and then I'm very happy to, to ask you about your history, please. If you wanna introduce me, <laughs> I'm very happy for. It. Okay, well it's. Uh as far as the history part, my first uh, introduction to Eskrima or Tali was through my dad, my father, uh, Isos Delma Sr., otherwise known as Kusini. Now, my dad, according to what he mentioned to me, that he was a, one of the youngest members at that time in Bersifati, back in Cebu. Mm -hmm. I was born in Bohol, but I have family in Cebu and my father from the world also. Uh, but it, it, I didn't know that, that this was a secretive and popular martial art in the Philippines when I was small. All I know is that my dad wanted me to, to defend myself, to have a, a chance to survive in case I have to defend. So he, he introduced this in a, in a real unusual way. You know. My dad raised uh, fighting roosters for Tatra. One day I was helping him pull a rooster, trimming the, the spur with a small knife. Yeah. And he says, oh, put the chicken now, the rooster. Come here. Okay. He says, I want you the small knife. He says, small one, like this. I want you to try to cut me, attack me. And I said, no, I can't do that. He said, no, you have to, if you want to learn. So I tried to do it, but it didn't last long because the knife went one way, I went another way. So I said, okay, you want to learn some more? You want to learn to defend yourself? I can teach you. I won't teach you every day, but I'll teach you when I can. So. That's my first lesson in, in <laughs> self-defense. So I said, okay. So I learned some of the techniques and some of the ways. First of all, you must stay close to your family. You must not let him get the upper hand. If possible, you don't give him the opportunity to back, go back, move away. Stay with him. Well, but be careful on guard all the time. He says, um, my style of fighting is up close, not far. It has to be close because it has to end quick. Get it done, get the job done. So he showed me techniques of how he would do his, his screamer. And he didn't elaborate, oh, this comes from this here and there. He just showed me. Uh, so I just followed because I wanted to learn. And uh, that continued for a while. Then, I, then he got busy, I got busy, and then we got sidetracked. Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't consistent, it was just one area. No one else in my family knew that I was training so much. My brothers didn't know. Uh, only I knew, and my father. He said, You have to be serious. If you are, then fine. If you're not, don't waste my time. Okay, so I went my way, I went to school, I went to high school, I went to join the military, but I kept practicing. And then I didn't forget. So when I came back from the military, I continued. Then I met, met my wife, Josefina, or uh, Joey. She introduced me to Master Tabota. At that time, the, this title was Batikan. 
but I can't really. Oh, yeah. So he introduced me to the uh, the, the Boso style schema. I understand he had learned under Grandmaster Floro Villabril. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, and besides that, my wife also taught me. So it's okay. Very good. Yeah. Um, and then through the years we practice and uh, we uh, mm -hmm. learn from other people too. We learn from this old man in, in uh, the Big Island. His name is Godoy. Old man Godoy. His style. He taught me the, the long stuff. Mm -hmm. Very long, like a modern style. Yeah, yes. Okay. Yes. So, fine. We learn from him. But we continue to, to practice the work. Um, and then he, Mano Tobosa told me, you want to learn a schema, you have to go to Stockton. If you can't go to the Philippines, go to Stockton. Stockton has more uh, practitioners, active practitioners in Stockton. And some of the old legends from there too, besides here. Uh, so okay, so we, we uh, met uh, Grandmaster Lubertino, before that. Professor John Ilya de Cuerdas uh -huh. um, and Lagaman, the Indian you all, all three types, and the, yeah. So we learned from them, and they came here to teach us also, uh, to visit us here. In fact, here in this park, have films of that. So further down, we learned from Ramiro Estelia, another Lagaman amongst the, uh -huh. the one. Oh, yeah. Uh, in between, we learned some technique from Dentoy Revelar. Dentoy Revelar is the head of the SLD school. S for Sarara, L for Ragaman, and D for the uh, mm -hmm. He is, I consider, one of the probably top authority of Sarara because he was much older than me. He's in his 70s. Uh, but he's a very modest man, very humble, polite man. He's, he's not always out, out there. But he's very smart, proficient, and a good friend. So I continued the art, and uh, uh, I wanted to promote it, because I didn't set out to be an instructor. I just wanted to learn it. I liked it so much, I, I, I just said, OK, we'll teach it. So my wife and I both taught it. As far as I know, we're still the only married couple that do the same thing with the schema for you. So it's uh, it's a, it's good that we do it. But we yeah. don't use it in our in our, in our domestic yeah. problem. Yeah. We never do. So, um, basically, the style that I learned from these instructors, I've combined them into my system. Mm -hmm. I took what I thought was probably more important, more direct, more practical, and I combined these techniques. Plus I added my own, two or three years of learning, and developing my own personal techniques. Um, I wish I could use the terms that people use today, uh, and Filipino words in it. Um, because I didn't practice my language, I only understand some of it. That's okay. I still had Super teach, even if I didn't know the terms. As you know, the, the words and terms and description of uh, the movements vary according to the structure and the style and region. But nevertheless, it's all part of the school of Aliyanis idea. Uh, my sole purpose, mission is to promote the art whenever I can, wherever I can, to whomever has a to learn to give their own uh, I say dedication to learn this art. I was told and that this art doesn't really belong to us. We're just a caretaker. Caretakers of the art as we pass on the art. Like the, some of the old masters, they maybe didn't pass it on, kept it with them. Hence, we died with them. Knowledge, experience, and everything else, which is sad because uh, again the preparation of the perpetuation of the art is really important. Um, I do what I do because I enjoy it, and I think I'm 
and I'm contributing to something of value to preserve life. Also to to understand that you have the power to take a life, but you also have the power to spare a life. Not necessarily to take a life when you don't have to. It's very hard to understand it for some people. Yeah. But I feel that things will work out better for you and beyond if you have that capacity to to do that. I have a question about your, uh, because you are a traditional grandmother and uh, very big knowledge about the martial arts, Filipino martial arts. And then I, I question you, what, what, you, what, you, what you think about the, the terms, about the terms about the, for example, in the Filipino language, many, many masters use a guru, use a dadu, use a other, other, other name. What do you think about, in your knowledge, big knowledge about that? Well, again, Basically, when you first start off, you have a teacher, you have a student. That's how people look at it. Some people don't think it's a title, fine. But one is a teacher, one is a student. Later on, the teacher and the student becomes a teacher. Through the permission and the testing of the his teacher. Oh, yeah. and with that comes probably a title. Everybody has title. We use the term maestro. Uh, okay? Okay. Maestro meaning master teacher, teacher, uh -huh. instructor. Uh -huh. We use that. Our system, the most system, we use a maestro. Maestro, yes. He also uh, used the term guru. So we picked it up. We just passed it on what he told us. Mm -hmm. So we, we use the term guru, mm -hmm. meaning not so high in rank as a maestro, but just below that. Okay. okay. More, more of a junior instructor, junior oh, master. Instructor. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then each system will have a ranking structure. In my system, the, the founder for me, since I'm the founder, grandmaster. Mm -hmm. yeah. Next person, if I can event, uh, elevate one of my maestros, probably to be a professor. Mm -hmm. professor. Below that uh -huh. will be maestro. Mm -hmm. And then you go to the last level of ranking my system. I don't have belts like karate school, like white, blue, green, purple, and blue. But I think some of the schools use that because in the Western world, level is important. It means to gauge the knowledge and experience. And for, um, for the kids, it makes them feel good that they earned that. Certain level for business and for describing the level they're at and giving them, uh, I would say, uh, a reason to move up mm -hmm. to attain a goal. So, again, they adopt uh, those, that system of different belts and ranks. Um, I don't uh, go deep into that so much because everybody has a reason for what they do and why they call it that. Um, I'm not familiar with the structure of uh, the titles in, in the Philippines mm -hmm. as far as Datu. Mm -hmm. I understand Datu is a Muslim background, uh -huh. knowledge um, for ranking for Datu, Raha, Raja, you know. So people use that as a me measure of ranking. For, for me, I, for some people it may not be appropriate for the, for the style they have compared to the title it is, it represents the morals uh, okay. and the, the, in the now. Okay. If someone was from Pangasinan or Kaviti, he will not use nothing, he will use something else, which is appropriate. So, I don't question that they have their reasons, but, oh, yeah. but I still wonder why. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Because I, I see other systems now using that, but I question, when the old master was alive, he didn't use Dato. Kamala didn't use that or, okay. or somebody else, that's fine. It's not for me to say, <laughs> because it's there. I understand it. So really, thank you very much for this interview, and I am so really happy because uh, to, to stay here for interview this great master of uh, traditional Filipino martial arts. Thank you very much, Master Delma.
thank you very much. okay, bye.